Hello everybody and welcome to NBOT, nobody on time, except for me and maybe Enrique. So we want to welcome yeah. you to our podcast. We are co-workers, we are badasses, we are dealing with everybody's shenanigans. We are NBOT. My name is Sal, and uh, our co-host slash partner slash genius of this project is the man, the myth, the legend, Enrique himself. What up? What up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. We're excited to get this thing kicked off. You guys are going to be cracking up. We're going to talk about what's going on with life, what's going on with sports, what's going on with work, and anything else that may come up. So we're excited to get this thing kicked off. Show number one. But let's go. Let's go with it. That's what I'm talking about, my friend. So Enrique and I found out through happenstance as we work together, we work in the same company in the same field, that we both kind of talk shit the exact same way. We can absorb it, dish it out the same way. So we had a lot of unique styles that you don't really see shared a lot between our levels because I'm a lower level than Enrique. Enrique's big boss. I'm middle boss. I'm so I'm, boss. I'm boss battle, okay? You're big boss battle. I'm maybe boss baby, maybe. Boss baby. <laughs> boss baby too, the bossening. That's how, that's how we go. So that's that's how we essentially were like, you know what? Let's just do it. We talk about this every day, and we're cracking up every day. Let's just spread some humor to the to the joy of the world, and maybe someone will be like, you know what? I deal with the same stuff. Like, it's finally good to hear that someone else is dealing with it. And uh, I get to enjoy it in more than an eight-second reel on social media. Well, really, this is our couch, right? Like, we don't want to spend a ton on psychiatrists. So let's just get on here. Let's vent our frustrations, make some people laugh, read some hilarious comments when this thing really takes off, and just go from there. Dude, I can't wait to respond to my mom's comment. She's going to be all about this. (laughs) It's definitely going to be my mom, too, and that's it. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Two new best friends. That's what I'm saying. Okay, anyway. That's right. All right, so we got to give you a rundown so that you understand who we are and what we want to do with this podcast. So I'll, I, can start the, uh, I can start the race, so to speak. I've been in the security business for probably close to, let's say, eight to ten years, eight and a half to ten years. I started doing mom and pop stuff in my, like, local area where I live. And then I went into, okay, it's like, you know, some of the heavy hitters, the big teams that are out there. From there, you know, I went from supervisor, I went to the next level up. I very stereotypically jumped the ladder the way that you would expect someone from bottom up to jump the ladder. As time went on, I got into the role that I am now, which is essentially like a trainer, a hiring person, a scheduler, you know, I coordinate a lot of operations between the teams that are out there and the management team that's behind me. So I'm like, a, uh, I guess you could say like an ultimate middleman when it comes to our security field. Um, what happens with all that is that you get everybody, every type of person, creed, color, religion, gender, whatever, every type of person you will experience in the security world comes through me and goes through me at one point or another, either as a coworker or as a subordinate or as a peer or as a manager, or even just like if you're at a location and you have to deal with the people that are at those locations, like civilians or clients or whatever. So for whatever reason, I have this really cool thing called a bullshit magnet and everyone just likes throwing it all at me. I'm talking about my pet lobster died and I got to bury it. They're like, uh, my girlfriend recently broke up with me and I bought her a horse to try and make up for it, but I got to go sell it at the fair. I'm talking like crazy. Like, I don't understand how you think that's an okay thing to say to me comments that just go through my life. And that's pretty much like my security experience has always been just like immediate ultra and then I'm talking Super Saiyan Ultra Blue with Goku. Like, it's just fucking crazy what ends up coming through my ears and my phone here. On a personal side, I mean, I'm just a chill dude. I talk a lot of crap because I'm funnier than I'm smart. So, like, it's easy to be funny instead of intelligent. But I have enough background to, like, back up a lot of the bullshit that I say without (laughs) being too nerdy as I poke my fucking glasses to my face. Like, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just, I'm a chill dude. I'm a dad. I got two kids, one wife. It's all been the same. Kind of grew up in your stereotypical 
Sicilian home. I can't speak it, but I know when I'm getting yelled that kind of deal. Well, the same thing with the Puerto Rican side of my family. Can't speak it, but I know when I'm getting yelled at. So that's really like my background, I guess you could say. I think you nailed it. I think that's nice. Um, um, you know, well, I'm Enrique and uh, similar background from Sal, except I've been doing it maybe 10 more years than him. I'm about 20 years in this September. Um, started out as uh, just a regular, regular run of the mill guard and just worked my way up through the system. Um, now at this point, you know, I, I manage a ton of clients. Uh, so every time a client is, is upset or, you know, needs something changed, like they're the person that's calling me and I've got to then relay that out to my team. Uh, so love what I do. Uh, it's always different. There's always something going on. Everything Sal said about, you know, the, the, the guards that are coming in and the excuses that they're giving us like that. I've heard all that probably 300 times <laughs> and it, it never ceases to amaze me the excuses. Uh, that come in and on a daily basis of just what's going on with their world and some of the people I feel bad for and some of them like come on really like just, just don't BS <laughs> me don't, don't don't bullshit me right yeah. just tell me hey I just don't feel like fucking coming into work yeah you'd be but, surprised uh, at how much people could get away with things and be more chill about it if they were just honest yeah right like, I don't just I don't need honest. the story just tell me like you're tired or you overslept or like it's nice out yeah I, it's beautiful outside i don't want to go to work like yeah. i feel like that sometimes or it's not yeah. beautiful outside and i still don't want to go just be <laughs> honest right. just be honest as long Honestly, as you tell me you. yeah you tell me ahead of time give me enough of a like a leeway give me some time i could find a sub for you but i can't find a sub for you five minutes before your shift starts maybe oh, five hours true. but not five minutes <laughs> yeah no and but that's the problem is they they think about it for two hours of like i don't know what i'm gonna say, I'm gonna <laughs> say and they give us no time to then find someone so it pisses us off so <laughs> public service announcement for everyone out there that's a regular security guard and your attendance is shit as soon as you think about calling off just call your supervisor mm -hmm. just do I'm it i'm not saying it's always going to work all i'm saying is they'd appreciate yeah. the honesty and as much time as you can give them just text just, me bro then i won't have to hear you lie to me just text me that's it i don't, <laughs> I don't want to hear your lies like i, I, I just I, it gets upsetting yeah. those are probably some of the worst co conversations are the ones where you know someone's lying to you and you're like come on bro like yeah. stop lying to me I'm like, bro, so, you, you just posted a reel that you're at fucking Wrigley Field. Don't tell me that you're sick. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, those are the best people. When they forget you guys are social media friends, and you start seeing all their stuff, and you're just like, why? Why? <laughs> so I I deal with that stuff on a, on everyday basis, uh, on top of, like, what Sal's talking about with, with, you know, running operations and stuff like that. So definitely understand all his frustrations. My frustrations are on a different level. But, you know, he's on the fast track. He'll be there very shortly i would imagine and uh personal life been married for she's gonna kill me if i don't get this right uh we're gonna go 13 years end of may we'll go plus or minus uh, two on that <laughs> <laughs> please give me cover this cover the spread no hey give me plus or minus two on the date that, that's <laughs> oh, what I need. no i know that's... the date. i'm never gonna forget <laughs> everything happens in june that's important her birthday my birthday our anniversary everything yeah, thanks, Jen. Yeah, well, mine's happened Memorial <laughs> Day weekend. I completely I just, planned it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like a husband of the year over here. I look like a fucking scumbag. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> but all of my major milestones in my relationship are all around holidays or things that I can remember. My kids were all born on dates that are easy to remember. Uh, I met my wife. Fourth of July weekend, 2005. I know that because the Sox won the series. So we celebrated that together. Uh, then the Bears went on and, you know, almost won a championship that year. So I thought that was a great year for me. I proposed <laughs> to her around Thanksgiving. We got married around, um, well, Memorial Day weekend. We got married because the, the hall was cheaper. We got married on a Sunday. Nice. So we saved some money there. Um, I like that it's all like a caveat yeah. to sports events. Like, oh, <laughs> that's it, awesome. That, that's how I live my life, man. That, that's how I live my life. And uh, she knows that. And she's put up with me for a very long time. Uh, I've got three wonderful kids. Uh, one that's going to graduate this month, high school. We're going to go crazy for him. Uh, I got a uh, eight-year-old and a thirteen-year-old, and uh, they're they're hilarious. You guys are going to hear about them. You guys are going to share 
in my uh, in my misery <laughs> and, in, and in our triumphs together. And you guys are going to hear about all the shit that they do. And, you know, if I had them and they're as witty and, and talk shit like I do, it, it's just you guys got to know it's a rough, rough deal with me. <laughs> yeah, just um, mini so. Enrique's. Right. Man, I'm like 25. Look at these grays. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these. I'm 25. Look at these grays. Yeah, bro, so, I'm ancient. Just gonna... <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. So, I mean, all we're gonna do is just entertain you for an hour at a time, a couple shows a week. See where this thing takes off, and uh, we'll adapt and grow as the channel does. So, I'm excited. Uh, just strap in and let's let's go ahead and get into it. Hell yeah, I'm pumped, bro. This is gonna be good stuff. It's good stuff. We both Absolutely. got similar families. We both got similar work life. We both got similar complaints that we all already vent about. So, let's jump into it, my friend. What's coming up this weekend? Speaking of yeah. husband of the year, what's coming up this weekend? Motherfucking Mother's Day. Mother's Day. That's right, son. I love man. my mom, and my mom thinks I'm cool as hell. So, like, there's no way I'm I could sure. lose. No, man. Well, you know, and I, I love my mom, too, but I'm just I'm tired of that holiday, man. <laughs> we, we, we get no fucking respect on that holiday. We, we got to do all this planning, get all these things right. You got to get the flowers. You got to make the reservations at the nice restaurants. Mm -hmm. they, they're hour wait, long time, mm -hmm. two hours, three hours. You Man, can't even get a reservation. That long? Shit. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. You can't take it to some like crappy place, right? It's got to be something fancy. It's got to be brunch. Like, who the fuck invented it's gotta brunch? Be like, brunch? Get out of my face. Yeah, what is that? Like, Bru you know, First of I all, just... let's not hate on breakfast food. But that's a different day. Okay, you hold write that down. That's a different day. No, nah, man, I don't like. Don't breakfast. be mad at brunch. You don't like no. breakfast food? Uh, no, I we got to like focus breakfast. on topics because I can't do I this right it. now. Don't don't <laughs> let me trail off, bro. Talking about food, I'm a big dude. Don't do that. Look, I love I love my wife. I love my mom. But you don't love, I love breakfast, all the mothers out it. there. <laughs> but it's this motherfucking Hallmark holiday where you're a scumbag if you don't go to the nose for these women. <laughs> And for Father's Day, look at what happens on Father's Day. We got to barbecue ourselves, right? No one's taking us out to eat. We All we're getting is, is socks and underwear. Like, where, where's yeah, man, the all go out? I need that, though. I get that at Christmas. I don't need it twice a year. Just just give me that at Christmas, and I'm happy. You need to run more and burn through them underwears faster. No, I like, I like the holes in there. It, it helps oh, me. No, you crazy. It helps me breathe. It keeps, that's not dry fit. You know, when Nike came out with dry fit and all that stuff, like, that was my dry fit. <laughs> my dry fit was some ripped up ass on the That's pants. it. It's got a ventilator, man. My guys are in there huddled up. They get sweaty. Let the air come in. <laughs> I'm I can tell you saying. right now, I ain't got no beef with Mother's Day as long as I get the night, okay? <laughs> you can have day all day. I'll take the night. Thank you very much. I get it. I get it. But Father's Day, we just we need some more respect on that holiday. When is if Father's Day? Go all out, exactly. When is Father's Day? Is that in June, too? Don't, don't even know. It's in June, right? All your that's holidays right. That's, that's my month. So, like, I month. just get whatever yeah. happens that month counts. Yeah, but you don't even know when Father's Day. No one knows. I don't need to worry about that. Just give me my the food that I bought and <laughs> put, yeah, let me and get the TV for two hours. Grill it on the deck. Yeah, that you have to then clean your own grill, get it all you ready. You think my wife is going to grill? Come on, bro. Well, come on. Well, I'm just saying, do something for us. Help help us. Yeah, help Hook me us help you. <laughs> help me help you. Help me I don't mind. Help See, you. but here's, here's, the, here's the flip to it, right? Yeah, like, okay, we got a grill. We got to do, we got to hit our stereotypes, whatever. But like, if I'm grilling, no one's coming out there and that's fine for me. That's peace. I can get like a good 30 minutes of like, I get to see the sun. I get some melatonin on my body. I get yeah. to see the, the kids playing in the, in the backyard or whatever. I get some chill time. As long as the bouncy ball don't come my way and knock this fucking grill over, I'm cool. I'll I do a chill I, time. I, Sal, I got chill time when I use the bathroom. I, I don't I mean, know. But that's good. That's everybody. That's given everybody. But I know that at least there's a dedicated day where if I go outside, ain't no one going to come out and talk to me. I'm okay with that. Because I get talked until to they, way too until much. Until they need something. Until they need you to open that's something. Right. They need I, you to fix something. Screw I, something. I enjoy yeah. being reaffirmed that I am useful. <laughs> 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 We're looking at little wins that, well, that you know build what? up to a big win. <laughs> I'm not Thomas the Train, bro. I don't know if you're useful. <laughs> Just put some respect on my holiday. That's all I got. What was say. that pissed off train? Wasn't that a big ass green one? That's that's yeah, you. Was, it was very, I think it was Percy. Percy. I'm not mistaken. I don't know why my Frank came into my head, really but maybe Frank Thomas. Frank. Yeah, no, that's probably what did it. To be honest, that's exactly what did it. All right, I get you're, it. You're a Cubs fan. No, I'm I'm a baseball 
a watcher. I'm not a fan. I'll go to the games, bro. I'm t- I'm gonna root for I'm gonna root for whoever's in the playoffs because I'm not. Pick a I'm not, fucking side. I don't care. I'm not loyal like that. I'm loyal to the Bulls. Oh, these hoes ain't loyal. Well, okay. You got whole potential. That, no, I'm okay. I must be getting that five dollar <laughs> Waukegan rate. That's how that yes, works. Five dollar Waukegan rate. <laughs> oh man, that and you know what? They give you coupons to the clinic. I I snapped all mine off. It's like haircut style. I filled out all the stars. I couldn't get no more. Got your punch card. Got my, my Waukegan punch cards maxed out. Sorry. Yeah. So all I'm saying is Mother Day, everyone, all the mothers out there, happy holiday. Appreciate everything you're about to get and go through. Uh, but just remember Father's Day. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah. my that's my PSA. Just remember Father's yeah, Day. Yeah. Don't forget about Enrique. Just everyone. That's it. Just flood the comments with you are in fact a father. Just tell yes. him that. You are a father. Yes. Like, I carry these kids for years in my sack, right? Months. Why can't my why can't the day just be more prestigious? Like, what, you want a crown on your you want a crown yes. on your balls or something? Crown me! Yeah. <laughs> crown me! <laughs> crown me! <laughs> All right? They're, I'm walking around with these kids floating in the sack and, and it sticks to my leg. Like I play with them. Jesus Christ. Give me more than just one day. Give me a weekend. Can I get a weekend? I'm not, I'm not gonna months. say. I'm not gonna say I'm looking up underwears that have like crowns on them, like old school underwears with like a fucking sock attachment with a crown at the end. But I may be that's, doing that. That's what I need. I'm just gonna click real quiet so you don't have to like, get distracted I, I, with my keyboard. I don't, need, I don't need a cock ring. I just need a crown Jesus underwear. Jesus Christ, bro! That's it. <laughs> I know you're gonna have to do a lot of editing on this one. There's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of beeps. <laughs> I think it's a lot, a lot of eggplant talk. Put some, put some respect on the nuts, bro. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Okay, so speaking about put some respect on it, let's go over. This is the smoothest transmission uh, in the fucking internet right now. Like let's that. go I over the respect we should have gotten this weekend oh, for our God. work efforts. Okay. Not, not, yeah, I mean, they should have all the red we can, carpet. We can talk about one day in particular, but I'm going to give you the rundown of my whole Friday, Saturday, Sunday with work. Let's okay, it, let's give everyone a, a magical point of view of how beautiful my, tri- my, my work ethic is here. I have, give or take, about 52 to 53 sites, 268 officers, supervisors, managers that are underneath them, and I schedule weekly about 9,600 hours on average, give or take maybe 200 here and there, without question. Now, as is tradition with almost any profession that involves hourly work, like retail or food industry, etc., the call-offs happen when the weather's good, when the weather's bad, and when the weekend happens. So for whatever reason this weekend, hit me hard. I had Friday, I had three call-offs, I had two people on vacation that I wasn't told went on vacation and I had to fill in their slots like immediately. And of course, it's not something that would be considered, quote, easy, end quote. It's all like this midnight stuff. Shift starts at 1 a.m. on Saturday or shift starts at 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. on Friday. Or it's like a crazy 12 hour day that's like starts at 7 p.m., goes to 7 a.m. It's nothing convenient like three o'clock in the afternoon. Or 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 9 o'clock in the morning. No, she's crazy out of nowhere. The client wants like these cool shifts that transition into the overnight for another 12 hours for no reason. That was just my Friday. That's five hits. And I only got a four-man cover team. So I, I got four bodies that I got to put in five places. So I got to figure that out. Fast forward to Saturday. I had two more people on vacation that I wasn't told about. I had two people that were no-call, no-shows. I had five call-offs. Three of them with less than eight hour notice. Two of them with less than ninety minute notice. And the ones that were happening were the what's our what's our policy? Our policy is a four hour minimum plus documentation. And I'm real chill about documentation. If you're sick, you don't need to go to the hospital. Just go to Walmart, buy some Nyquil, take a picture of the receipt, fucking return the Nyquil. Four ninety nine is going to break your bank. Send me the picture. You get into a car accident. Message. Go to go. Just dial AAA. They're going to send you a digital receipt, a digital invoice. Send me the invoice. You can block out all your personal life. I just need to see your name, the date, and the time to, to coordinate when you called off. Because don't tell me you got a flat tire 
and then four days later you fixed it. Like that ain't gonna, that won't help anybody. I want to, I want to see that car rolling on a donut. For yeah, time. assuming that you know how to change a tire or that the you know what a donut is. Oh, bitch, gonna go to Walmart that. and get a twelve pack <laughs> and be like, well, I bought some donuts. Here's the receipt. <laughs> It's crazy. And then, of course, where our, where like Enrique and I interact with one another is I'm one level below Enrique. So I deal with like the actual operation, the, the officers. He deals with the clients and together the, that's how the contracts work, like in the most basic way. So I get call offs that happen. I try and field uh, like flex people or anyone that can come in, like call the shift before and be like, hey, you want to hold over for a couple hours? We can modify like your times, make sure everything's accurate, make sure you get paid. We can compensate you correctly, blah, blah, blah. Of course, this is a thousand times difficult when Enrique and I just so happen to very luckily be already chatting about like MLB the game or whatever at, you know, one o'clock, one thirty, And we both get the notification at the same time from the same officer saying, hey, I'm not going to make it to my 2 a.m. shift 45 minutes from now because, quote, something happened with my family at two o'clock in the morning now you're obligated to your family all of a sudden when earlier in the week you told me oh i'm just not i'm gonna blow off my family party because i need to get that money oh okay so now we care about the family at two o'clock in the morning on a sunday or whatever so enrique, yeah, enrique and i <laughs> are calling officers people who aren't awake people who are awake we're calling field managers we're going through every tier every avenue two o'clock two thirty three o'clock and then we finally get someone out there i mean it sucks that we have to stay up and do all this stuff because like it burns out my day it's a regular day you know i'm up at like nine o'clock in the morning seven o'clock in the morning on saturday and now i'm up you know fucking what is it 19 hours later still doing work shit on a weekend for whatever reason but no one believes that like we do that they just think that we're this nine to five role or that i'm 24 7 like, bitch, don't text me at 3 in the morning. Like, I'm not going to, I mean, I'll probably answer it, that, but, like, I shouldn't have to thing. answer it. That's the biggest thing right there is the no consideration from the employees that, hey, I might have a life as well. I might be sleeping. <laughs> like, I, I one time in, early in my career, um, I had a guard call me in the middle of the night because somebody dropped off a badge and it didn't say sergeant on it and it said officer and he felt like he was demoted oh my god like that couldn't happen during the day you couldn't call me during the day and when i when i asked him why didn't you call me during the day he's like well i sleep during the day oh, okay man fuck me yeah <laughs> hey we got a visitor oh snap oh got someone late to the party or do we are you muted is this just funny he's muted he's right muted now. Ladies, gentlemen, people of all ages, sizes, creeds, and religions, you can't believe the man who just walked in the digital door. It is Cecilio. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. You wouldn't believe the luck I'm having today. <laughs> oh, why don't you tell us about that Please. and then introduce yourself? Yeah. Please, we would love sure. to hear the audience. Sure. Yeah, love let me let me document let me document your attendance in the fraction really quick, Absolutely. and then and then please introduce yourself. Oh, that's perfect. I'll take it. <laughs> so, let me just explain. You know the reason why I'm running a little behind tonight. I was a nice guy. Thought I'd take a nice little drive, get home after a nice beautiful drive, <laughs> washed and waxed. And uh, my car doesn't want to come out of park. So here I am. Still made it. A little late, but still made it. Sitting in the middle of the city of Chicago streets. Yeah, you're still, <laughs> you're in, the still in the car? <laughs> I'm still in the car. My man. Loyal to the podcast. So if you still want to take that uh, that disciplinary paper, <laughs> you know what well, you can oh, do with it. Oh, hey. Hold on. Hold on. First, we need proof. Like, you can't just say yeah. that and not send us a picture. So, please send that over to Sam. I don't want to see can. a video of your fucking dash, okay? I want some documents. Yeah. Oh, send, yeah. send a GIF. Send, like, <laughs> yeah, send sure. me a GIF. <laughs> don't send me no... Like mechanics. This is GTA 5. <laughs> mechanics not on right? What can the best mechanic in LS do for you? <laughs> my man, my man. Pull out that cell phone. It's got everyone on there. See, at least he knows yeah. the answer. That's what's important. Oh, man. 
So, so let's go, Cecilia. Go ahead and let us know about yourself. Let the audience know who you are, what you do, what you've uh, been doing, how long you've been doing it, about your family, man. Sure. Uh, we'll start off with the family portion. I'm a father of three. Uh, I don't know how I'm still here, but I'm a father of three. You? And about another father of about 200 plus people. So if you want to take that into consideration. <laughs> okay, Darth. <laughs> 200 plus, not bad. Yeah, a lot of plus. It's a lot of legwork. Yeah, it's uh, it's devastating, but I'm a busy guy to say the least. I've been in this well, field definitely with two hundred kids. It'll be about four years in this field. Nice. Caught a nice break. Ended up on the uh, upstairs side of things, but I'm still that same guy from downstairs at heart. I love how each of us double the one before us. Yeah, He's been right. in here for about four years. I've been in security for eight years. You've been in security for about, whatever, almost 20 years. 20 years, yeah. That's crazy. And then that we is. all end up in the same office. Like, that's even more cool. Well, that's just the luck of the draw sometimes. Yeah. Let's see who's going to who's gonna last it out. I think I can beat you, Enrique. I don't think so. Man. If you keep that skeleton, <laughs> you just got to, you're going to be like everybody, that lifer, be that skeleton in that office. I'm that, I'm that li- I enjoy what I do, man. Like it, it, it was a lot of bullshit. Like at your level, I get it. Yeah. I get it. The, the bullshit level that's there. I get what you have to put through, but like, I'm Sean Shank, right? I came out the pipe <laughs> on the other side, flushed the shit off me. And like, I, I, I feel good. Like I've got a good team. You know, I, I, I rarely get the calls. And what I do is because it's, oh, shit. Yeah. And I'm I'm an old shit fixer. Like, that's what I do. That's how I got to where I'm at. Because my whole thing is I can troubleshoot on the fly and just get a solution. At the end of the day, it's about getting work done. That's what I do. Forget about it. Yeah, a $40 solution. Fuck you. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like burning through my fucking Man. margin compression with $40, you motherfucker. You like that? That's crazy. <laughs> People but I get it. I mean, they showed up. So I, what am I supposed to say to that? So. And they stood. Mm-hmm. And when they didn't have a relief, they called me and said, hey, I don't have a relief. I don't have people just walking off. Yeah. You I, know, I, want to, I want to talk about that as well. Like, so I've been at several companies that have been acquired. Mm. And I've taken a stable of officers with me through the years. I've got people that have been with me loyal for many years. Because at the end of the day, if you take care of your officers, they're going to want to stay. And that goes for anything. It's not just the security industry. If you make your people feel like they're loved and wanted and they're part of something bigger, the loyalty you're going to get is tremendous. And I've got a stable that have been with me through everything. And I appreciate that. So, like, when I have problems, like when you were calling me over the weekend, Mm -hmm. that's who I was calling. I was calling my go-to people that I've had for years. And that, that sense of loyalty and that stuff, like, to come in, like, that's what people who get to our position sometimes forget, that those people are what make us. And we can't operate, we can't provide that service to that client without those people. So I'm going to have to give it up to those people, those, those you know, the grunts, the ones that really build this, these companies up to where they are. And when you get when they get up there, they forget about them. And all of a sudden, we can't take care of them, you know, like we used to. So I'm not gonna go on a political ramp, but yeah, um, yeah gotta live no, that uh, I... live that pizza party life. Because <laughs> <laughs> trust me, it happens at our level too. Our level too, man. Except and it's Chinese know, food. The... That's that's the only difference. <laughs> and then you hear the infamous line: "It'll it won't be forgotten until yeah. the next mm-hmm. fucking fuck up." And then it's yeah. like, "Hey, what happened to all that that uh, goodwill is building up?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in that fucking mushu chicken that I ate two weeks ago. That's where that's it is. That's right. That's, that's exactly where it is. You shit it out the next day. <laughs> Hell no! I stayed at the office. They're gonna pay me to poop. <laughs> My man, Cecilia. Yeah, so that finished out your weekend, man. Anything else on Sunday? Yeah, Ceci- no. Sunday was at that point. Sunday was chill. But C- Cecilia, what's what's one of the crazy shit things that happened for your weekend? We were talking about no calls. You know, two a.m. call offs. People that got approved vacation time, but I wasn't told about it. That that was like our rundown. Well, what was the craziest thing that happened to you, Cecilio? Uh, this weekend it was uh, you want to count Friday in consideration? Yeah, yeah. Go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, uh, let my uh, put my pride to the side and did something I haven't done in a long time. Oh, but uh, it felt good to kind of <laughs> connect to the downstairs level again, but. 
Uh, it's just something I wouldn't see myself doing. It's been almost a year and I haven't really done it, you know, not by choice at least. So <laughs> would I do it again? Maybe if it, you know, but it's all, you know, dedicated yeah. to the job. And, so just to clarify, you, you work the post, he worked the post K-Pod and he worked the post, the I big man my, up uh, top decided to put that golden chair to the side and come down with the peasants. <laughs> but I'll tell you something though. The look on the people's, you know, the lower people's faces, man, it just, absolutely. I don't know. It made it, made it good. They said, oh, you know, you're, you're relieving me. You're coming. I said, yeah, I'll right. be there. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's something I'll never forget. It I've does, never seen it happen yeah. in my career. I've never seen it, but. And they'll, they'll be loyal. First. Like, no, I think so. Yeah. You're willing to come out after you worked all morning and come out and make sure they got home to their families. Like that's, that's special. That's a, that's a solid five days of loyalty right there. Damn, One of my guards right. mentioned the uh, barbecue. <laughs> you what, to bring it to, to you or to, or to invite you? Yeah. Some, some, that's something like well, that. You better bring a plate back to the office. I want to see if it's any good. Better be for fucking Father's Day. <laughs> you know, bro, you missed it. <laughs> this dude went off on Mother's Day, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Talking about how he wants like a fucking crown on his nuts. <laughs> they can worship him. Man, I'm like Neo, right? <laughs> Come on, I'm bro. I'm drinking. I'm Wait. I'm people, bro. Like, that's what I do. I'm taking them out. So, Cecilia, go ahead and finish out your weekend. You worked the post Saturday or Friday, and then what happened the rest of the weekend? It was just nonsense the rest of the weekend. I mean, it's it's been that way since I've acquired a certain Title. A certain place, I guess you could say. Um, it's mm. just been nonsense, but I hope hopefully one day it does stabilize, and you know, in a perfect world, I won't have to go work post anymore. Yeah, more power to you. I think I've worked post in this position. Like Cecilia, for everyone, Cecilia and I are at the same level, so we're, we have the same title. We do the same thing. I, I think as much as Cecilia's worked a post, I think I've only worked a post twice in eighteen months. Because it's been like, there is literally no other option, and I got to leave my house up in Northern Lake County and get to, like, Franklin Park in an hour. Or it's just, you know, SOL. But, yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do sometimes, but I'm here to avoid that. I'm here to, like, mitigate, as, and Cecilia, both of us are here to mitigate as much of those issues as possible, as quickly as possible, as long as I'm awake. But if you catch me between, like, 3.30 and 6 a.m., I ain't going to help you. I'm that's I'm out, period. I'm a rock. At some point, you've got to recharge your batteries. Yeah. But 6.01, I'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> it's no. not, not 5.59. Especially on the weekends. And, like, that's crazy, yeah. right? Like, you still have stuff to do. You have obligations at home. Like, there's still stuff that needs to get done at home, and you can't be working all the time. So that's what happens with, you know, upper management above my level. You know, sometimes – realize it and they say they do but like stuff still needs to get done at the end of the day it's either yeah. you know you you put it put it up you know put up suck it up and get it done or you know if you don't then you end up with other consequences and it could lead to losing an account which is you know bad. pretty bad in our industry especially <laughs> yeah, due to service. yeah but yeah all right let's flip it let's go full glass half what's the good version of that glass half full glass half empty no it has to be half, half full, half full. Yeah. glass half whatever good is we're big sports guys. And by big, I mean Enrique is a big sports guy. Huge. I just like watching sports because I never got into sports as a kid except for soccer. And you can't have those conversations as a child. Everyone plays volleyball, football, baseball, and basketball. No one really plays soccer, at least up where I was in like Northern Lake County. So I always well, I... loved watching sports, but I never really got into playing the sports. So, like, I grew up non-sports home. Like, the, mm. my dad does not watch any sports. Boxing, and it would only be when Julio Cesar Chavez would fight, is the only time my guy would watch uh, any sports. Mm. So I had to, like, just get that that hunger for it on my own. Um, I tried to instill it in my kids, but, <laughs> like, they're starting to come around now, but they weren't really interested. Like, my oldest got interested probably freshman year. Mm. He got on the basketball team, and that kind of really – triggered it then all of a sudden he's playing fantasy sports all this other stuff so my my middle child no way <laughs> Caesar has no interest at all i i'll tell you a story one time i was watching football he came down to watch the, the games with me right so i'm thinking he's interested so he's watching he's asking questions 
And uh, he's like, hey, it's unfair. These guys get to make millions of dollars to just play a game. I said, nah, you know, it, it's because of all the fans that go yeah. and see it. Like, it's it's their cut. So I'm like, hey, man, I really appreciate that you're starting to get into this. He's like, not really. I just came down to, you know, make you think that I did. Uh, <laughs> but I really, I really don't care. And he walked out. <laughs> like, what? Just dropped what that honest bomb and walked away. That was it. He just told me straight to my face. He didn't really care. <laughs> and he didn't give a shit what was going on. He just wanted to make it seem like he did. And I appreciate. It. I mean, like, that's lie. that's a nice gesture. Yeah, but... lie to me. But don't don't tell me you don't care and then walk out on me. Just finish the lie and then let me think. That <laughs> but, <laughs> he's a straight shooter. My middle son Caesar, straight shooter man, tells you like it is. Gives me the most headaches I could probably ever live with on the debates. Like this kid is so witty. Mm. I know where he gets it from, and it's just like I'm debating myself when I talk to him. And it's and he's told me he's gonna put me to nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> He's got my bed picked out, and that's where I'm going because him and I have such epic battles. Yeah, like he's not even going to give you the luxury of that double twin. You're going to get just oh, that no, twin, and that's no. it. <laughs> Whatever the state minimum is that he has to do to get me in, like that's where I'm going. About to get that you know, that sleepover bag and a pillow. <laughs> that Junior Soprano, season mm-hmm. six B. <laughs> that's that's going to be me. <laughs> I, I'm going to be staring out the windows with bars on it in my in my pajamas, just on a wheelchair that's all rickety. Like that's going to be me. <laughs> I'm hoping that one of the other kids makes it and they can take care of me because Caesar's going to put me away. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, my kids are still too young to like comprehend enjoying the sport so my yeah. my oldest is four turning five soon yeah they still don't know and she knows daddy's watching basketball yeah. and she understands that what's on the screen is basketball and she knows what's on the screen is baseball or is hockey but she like she's not going to sit there and watch it because she can't get entertained about that right. we need that fast mickey mouse fucking blues clues bullshit to be flying by them yeah. colors got to be running so what I started to do is I was like, okay, if we're not going to do basketball, we're going to do video games. So I started getting her into like Mario. So I'll go on YouTube and I'll be like, let's find the Mario stuff. Not like the cartoons that I grew up with. Let's find those people that are just playing all the mini mini games in like Mario Party. And she learned the characters by watching the Mario Party game. She's like, oh, that's Rosalina. Oh, that's Daisy. That's Princess. That's Mario. That's Luigi. That's Bowser. So it's like she knows all that. And then, of course, she went to go see the video, the movie with my wife. And she's like, you know, oh, I love Mario now. I don't need nothing to do with the princesses. I want all the Mario stuff. So now she's got all these stuffy Mario toys and stuff. Nice. My, awesome. my, my youngest, he's two. He's just a speed demon. He runs so fast that he runs on his tippy toes. He doesn't understand how to run flat-footed. And he just throws shit. So I'm kind of hoping for that baseball, <laughs> right, that baseball right. boy to be in my world, because that'd be cool. Because there's no one in the well. I mean, I have cousins that used to play minor league, like the equivalent of minor league hockey. But then, like everyone got families, we all grew, grew up, quote unquote. But like, no one really went for it. So I was like, oh, I wonder if he'll be one of the Sakalas to go for it. That'd be dope. That'd be cool as hell. And, I mean, that'd be awesome to see him make it and just yeah. I mean, it would be when I go see my kids like. So my my young or my oldest played basketball in high school. Uh, he's a senior now, going to graduate, like I said. Mm-hmm. So, it when the first year he played, it was it was significant time. But you know, then he COVID hit, so there was no sophomore season. Junior year, they didn't make he didn't make the team. So you know, I had to tell him, you know, Jordan didn't make the team one year. You know, so don't worry about it. Yeah. So this last year he gets in, he makes varsity, great, right? And then he doesn't play. And I'm just thinking. Like, doesn't play like he's bench for him, or he just doesn't want to. Yeah, he's not no, showing he's up. on the bench, right in the bench for no reason. Oh, he gives man. effort, goes to practices. It's it's coaching, right at that level, and it's hard as a parent to sit there and know that they're not even giving your kid a shot. Right. And like you know, okay, you get it. Like he's not when he gets in there, he's he's not fully engaged or whatever. He's not getting the plays. That's because he's not getting enough. That's what happens time. when you bench him, yeah. Exactly. So like it's frustrating not to just be yelling at the coach all the time. Like you've got to sit there and want to defend your kid, but know that he's got to grow up to defend mm-hmm. himself and kind of be his own man. 
So it's 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 a hard transition. Uh, and now my youngest is playing flag football. And they're, you know, coaches are great. Everyone gets a chance. Like, he's running the ball. The kid went backwards one time. So, like, everyone's, like, yelling, like, go the other way. And I'm just like, All right, shut up. Let him run how he runs. Don't worry about it. So, like, it's flag football. Relax. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. And I wanted to instill some sports into them. Uh, but, you know, they take it as they get it. I don't force it on them. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll go. What about you, Cecilio? What's your level of sport, level of knowledge? What can we expect uh, going forward? What are your favorite teams? Who do you like? I, I hope he shows like? that it's all drift racing. Please tell me. It's you know, I love the Chicago White Sox. Just I'm a diehard fan. Yes. Outside. Yes. Just like the street I'm stuck on still. I feel like that's directed at me. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe after this segment, I may have to uh, leave post early just so you guys know. Because, yeah, I need to get this figured out pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so currently also I have White Sox plates, White Sox debit card, White Sox Man. hats, jerseys, but I don't watch sports whatsoever, so this is not going to be a section for me. Uh, I'll rep it all day, all night, but <laughs> I, I just can't. Well, you're a, big, you're a big I'm, car guy, though, aren't you? Which one? You're a big car guy, though, right? Yeah. Because you're, like, cars... all about your truck, you're all about your car for sure. You ever do drag racing? You ever, like, take cars up to, like... Great Lakes up in Wisconsin or whatever. I have not. Oh, dude. What about like go? What about like go kart racing? You ever do any go kart shit? Oh, when I was a kid. Oh, dude, we got we got some major check driver. marks. We got to check this year. <laughs> well, I don't know if they could support my weight. Like, I'm not a skinny dude. No, they like, got like we're talking about like actual thirty mile an hour golf or like uh, go kart things. Oh, they I'm they got there. they got big ones, bro. For like us. Oh, I'm there. You got big boy uh, cards. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, you know, I watched heavyweights. Like that's my goal in life is to win a, a you know, go kart race. Oh, we could do that. Yeah. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna flip, but like we could do that. <laughs> I might be throwing some like blue shells at you, motherfuckers, just throwing shit across the map. Absolutely, got it for sure. We did some banana peels for sure. Oh man, ain't nobody eating bananas. I can't take that risk in public. <laughs> you don't want to show them skills in public. I'm not ready. I mean, I eat a banana pretty good. I saw the funniest fucking reel the other day. This is like completely unrelated to talking about food, though. Where uh, this group of guys like review like old wrestling stuff, like old back in the 90s, like uh, Raw's War, like Attitude yes. Era stuff. Yes. They were talking about one of the WCW Nitro days on TNT or whatever. And they said, we saw the funniest signs all in the same one. One of them was like a, a fucking 12-foot banner that just promoted a completely different wrestling organization. And then this guy in the front row, back when it was just like the steel grid would separate you from the ring, yeah. this guy in the front row had a sign that said, Goldberg eats corn the long way. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's so fucked up. Well, you can see it, right? Like, just straight up just wide and just filleted that corn. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucking crazy of a visual oh, of thinking Goldberg eating corn the long way. But I get he got famous on it, right? I mean, you know, someone so talking is, about was talking about it 25 <laughs> years later. It's hilarious. I gotta find uh, that look, man. Let me let me go over my sports resume, kind of what I'm into. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's baseball, White Sox, diehard. You know, ride and die with them. I'm not a you know Cubs fan or a Chicago fan. I'm White Sox. Now, when my guys don't get in the playoffs, I'll pick a team and watch them. You know, that's just mm -hmm. how it is. You know, Chicago sports is uh, is one Great. of those. Uh... Go ahead, see. Chicago, yeah, Chicago. <laughs> He's bad wagging you. Sorry, I'm sorry. He's just fucking bad wagging you. If you're a diehard Sox fan, nah, I, well, I can't stop bro. watching because the playoffs start. My guys aren't in there. So what? That's it. You stop watching like a real man. Ooh, yeah, man. dude, man. playoff, playoff, Be any sport. Come Be on, man. you gotta watch playoff. Yeah. Playoff yeah, sports. Man. That's the best time to watch. Like that's when shit's uh, made. Like I grew up watching the Yankees win in the early 2000s, right? Like you know Jeter and Mariano Rivera, you know Roger Clemens, yeah. all the steroid stuff. Like that was good baseball. Not, you know, <laughs> Just like when steroids were yeah. in MMA, it was good times. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, bring steroids back. Side note: <laughs> I love, I love that fucking Cecilio gave you shit for watching yeah. sports yeah. when he's not yeah, watching. He's not going to contribute on this segment at all. <laughs> <laughs> watch any sport just gave me shit we're still watching it to the point he's just the loyalist period 
All right, so baseball, we talked about baseball. Basketball, I'm diehard. Bulls, Bulls bro. Bulls, Bulls 100%. Sure. I'm diehard there. You know, when it gets into the to the playoffs, you know, I'll just, you know, watch whatever. Almost, oh, almost again, got in team. this year. Almost. Fucking Jimmy Buckets Jimmy. doing his thing. Yeah. Said you shouldn't have traded me and just and just ripped our hearts out. We're right there, fourth quarter. Uh, football diehard Bears fan. Bears, 100%, 100%. Bears. Hey, we're on the we're on the on the rebound. I really like what this new management team's doing. I like it. Uh what hockey, I'm not a big hockey guy, but uh the Hawks when they were winning, you know, I'm a bandwagon person. Hawks got there, good. They got else. good yeah. draft picks uh, this year. There we go. Now the truth comes out. This guy. Fucking bandwagoner. Hey, <laughs> when it comes to hockey, for sure. It's it's whatever. I like playing the game. I like playing NHL, you know, 2K, whatever, whatever the game's called. Uh, I, I can play hockey, no problem. Soccer, I only watch during the World Cup. Uh, Brazil has always yeah. been my team. Italy. Uh, Italy. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. And uh, I've been to some World uh, World Cup games. Thanks to my, my mother-in-law. She's a huge, huge oh, fan. Cool. Loves it. So my all my wife's family they just love uh, soccer. They hate the NFL because it takes me away from the family for a whole day. But oh well, they'll get over it. The they sacrifices have, it's, it's the family time. makes. Right. <laughs> right. What am I missing? Uh, WWE. Love watching wrestling. Yeah. Uh, been loving it since I was a kid. Uh, boxing. I, I watched boxing here and there. I like the the big fights. I just watched the fight over the weekend. Canelo's past his prime. It's it's just it's time to start. You know, give up those belts because uh, it's it's just bad. I mean, 35, 35 punches in a round is just gonna cut it. Like who, who's throwing that? Like you you should be me? up in the one. <laughs> well, right, right. That's me. That's me playing with my kids. Like thirty punches and I gotta sit down. Yeah, that's full exhaustion. <laughs> that's a twelve round exhaustion. One round. Of- right. So thirty five punches. But when the Wii came out, I was throwing those <laughs> I'd lo- I can imagine that on that big ass screen. Yeah, for sure. So that's kind of my sports thing. Love love Chicago sports. Uh we're we're kind of in uh sports hell. Like it's it's just yeah, it's rough. always something. Well, my problem is Reinsdorf. He needs to just sell the teams. Uh, new management there with the Bears. They're going to get rid of the whole McCaskey team there. Like, that's just, it's time to sell, move to Arlington Heights, build us a, <laughs> an actual stadium, and let's go to work. Yeah. Man, I just want to go to games, bro. Yeah. No, I'm just ready man. to go. I'm ready to go. Hey, we'll, we'll do some. Uh, some we got to get, we gotta get some size games in, for sure. Like, for I'm sure. all about it. I'll defect. I don't care. I'm all about I just want to go see the games, bro. I just love yeah, seeing the games. Sure. I've been to Cubs Park. Like, you know what? Uh, company had season tickets so i would take clients park. down there yeah, what I'm a not slap it. oh, it's a club it's cubs park man it, it's all it is is a big ass bar like it's it's so terrible i don't deny um, that i'm just yeah, saying that's all it is it's just like sinatra you shook sinatra you gotta respect it right babe ruth stepped his feet <laughs> in that park man you gotta respect that park the greats came through there you know what wherever he stepped on the goat shat on it so we're we're just let's stop talking Jesus. about Babe Ruth. <laughs> it's, it's i don't want to talk about cubs park like that but i've been there i give respect to the neighborhood i wish that's something that we can do in the south side just not going to happen you know we're right in the middle of the projects out there it's just not going to happen uh but i like what i respect what they've done they've got a good team this year uh hopefully this, the Sox can turn it around they but, blew I mean, out today it was awesome yeah, or was it yesterday? They, a little they, bit had, of a run. they had a crazy, they had a crazy like third or fourth inning. They had like twelve runs. It was nuts. Yeah, and it's like save some for the next game. Like, what are we doing? It's yeah. either like we go crazy or we don't do anything. Well, I mean, my Cubs went fucking fourteen innings, couldn't get one goddamn run to save their yeah, life. They just gave they up. Went, they went a span of games though where they were scoring double digits every game. I couldn't believe it. That offense is on point. I'm sure you can feel me shrugging. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah well, I'm, ex- I'm excited about the bears I- i've been all in on the bears i went to the draft party going crazy took pictures got I-, I had this white bears hat got it autographed by a bunch of players i i'm super excited about what this season is going to bring you know we- we've redeveloped or revamped our whole offense the defense is going to be sick we need to get some more pass rushers you know some edge help but that secondary, that linebacking core, special teams, offensive line, like it's the full package. If these rookies that we just drafted develop, we're going to have a hell of a team. So I'm predicting right now, Uh-oh. I'm predicting, mark this, 10 wins. 10 wins? 10 wins. Wow. Comeback, comeback team of the year. Coach is going to win coach of the year. 
Dude. Fields is going to throw for 4,000 yards. Slow down, bro. Hot take. Hot take. I, I was literally, these last, like, 25 seconds, I was full bobblehead mode, just nodding at all this fucking shit you're telling me. And then you're like, 10 wins? Even, even I, Ten as a casual, wins. hyper casual. Look, last year, last year, 1-8 in, in one-score games. If our defense takes a step forward, we go easily. Easily turn that around and go to eight and one. Wow, we won what three games last What's year? Today? That's an 11 wins. <laughs> we mark this May oh, mark 8th, 10 34 p.m. Mark it. Some I'm crazy right things be talking about in this in this case. Mark, mark it. I'm telling you right now. I so, talked about I'm, defecting I'm to the Sox. He's making yeah. crazy Bears predictions. It's not so crazy. Cecilio's, Cecilio's talking about how he's might watch maybe. No. There's a lot of crazy things being talked about here. Called me a fucking fair weather fan. Well, I'm gonna, grab him by, I'm gonna grab him by his wife beater. Oh, don't ruin that, man. Those are some good shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I can't show off these cutters without that shirt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just mad because they don't make them my size. They do. You just gotta order them. You just don't want to pay that price. <laughs> not for, a, not for a, a quarter of a t-shirt. No. <laughs> <laughs> just work it. <laughs> Go full Chiquita banana, bro. Just work it. Oh, man. You don't want to see these rolls out there, baby. There ain't enough butter out there for that. <laughs> oh, Christ. That's great. For sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this uh, upcoming bear season. I'm hoping the Bulls do something this offseason. I hope the Sox just make it respectable this year. That's what I'm looking for in Chicago sports coming up. Uh, and I'm looking for this podcast to be there for all of that. And when we hit 10 wins, we're going to do a special show. I'm telling you, yeah. when the Bears hit 10 wins, we're going to do a special show. I'll tell you right now, the Bears get 10 wins, I'll take 10 pies to the face. That'll be the first reel of the show. I'm going to put the pies in your face. That's fine. I don't, I'm, that sounded really misleading, but like I'm all about it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm pumped. Absolutely. I'm pumped for Chicago sports. NBA and NHL playoffs have been off the hook this season. Like, I'm loving that. Baseball's picking up in a good way. I'm loving that. I'm a bit. I'm like. I'm a big casual watcher. So I'm all about just like multi-screen watching everything. I don't because sure. I don't take in the stats. I'm not a big stat guy. I'm not like a DraftKings dude. I just love fucking watching sports. I love it. Now I I do I put a lot of money on FanDuel I, I have bet a lot oh, of stuff no. I I hit on some I hit on, on others I ain't got I, that I manager hit. money I can't do that <laughs> I get it I get it I'm I'm a, I'm a gambler too I like going to the casinos so you know maybe we'll do some casino reviews on some of these segments oh but, that'd be dope um, Sal who you got for the NBA playoffs man who's who's winning it all this year Ooh who's taking it all Yeah it's hard for me not to say the Suns and I'm gonna tell you a real shitty reason why I like them. Cause them jerseys look dope, bro. <laughs> Booker's okay. Booker's good. Chris Paul's good. I think I'm pretty sure Chris Chris Paul got injured. Did you say Chris Paul? Did he get injured? He's. I don't know if he's injured, but he's that old man at the rec center that still plays. I really want him to be wearing them long shorts in that game because I see that he's... commercial a lot, bro. <laughs> but like Durant's there. Like you got a team that's built to go there on paper, Supposedly. right? Supposedly. But Denver is like doing what they do. Then I really want to see Joker get down there. That'd be dope yeah. as hell. I mean, yeah, I really want, if we go east side, I really want Butler to, like, turn this kind of, like, out of nowhere story because they had to go through two play-ins to get into the playoffs. Yeah, and then they knocked out Milwaukee in the process. That's pretty dope. Like, okay, yeah, you're fighting New York, but New York got there for a reason, so they're going to put up a fight. But, like, imagine the Eastern Conference with, like, Literally either one, Boston or Sixers against Miami would be fucking cool. And then I would love to see how Butler will play against Joker. That would be a crazy matchup. It's just like anything, any combination you get with these last four or five team, four teams or whatever are going to be insanely cool. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So you're, you're saying Suns versus Heat? I would love to see Suns versus Heat. I think that'd be You know good. what? I, I'll tell you this right now. The winner of the Suns and Denver make it to the finals. Yeah, absolutely. What I'm, what I'm seeing going on with the Lakers and Golden State, I can't believe what the hell's going on over there. Like, I mean, I do like the rematch. And, like, that blowout game happened, what, was that Sunday, I think? It was back-to-back -back blowout. It was Saturday because, because they won Saturday, by, like, 30 they, or whatever. Yeah, and then the Lakers came back and blew them out by 30. Yeah. So, I think Golden State won by 40. Lakers came back by 30. Like, yeah. Golden State, what's going on? You've got so much firepower around, like, what they're just, they're small. 
Yeah. You know, so and everything on the east, everything on the east has been close games. Yeah. Like Jimmy yeah. had like that crazy 50, 50, 54 point game or whatever. But all the bad. all the games have been like within twelve points. Whereas you go on the west coast, every game is like a twenty point game. It's a blowout everywhere, which makes yeah. it exciting. And the same thing's happening with the NHL. Like the Bruins got completely blown out of the water by Florida Panthers, who like no one expected that to happen because the and Bruins they, were, they went the up. Best- Best record, right? Yeah, they were best record for the season. They went up like 3-1, and then yeah. Florida just decided to shit a brick and go nuts on them. Oh, it was crazy. That, that kind of reminded me of the Patriots when they were undefeated with, with Moss, mm-hmm. and then they lost against the Giants. That's all. I mean, NHL playoffs have been fucking crazy like that. The, the Oilers have done blowout games where they've won by like four or five goals. The Devils have done blowout games when they won by four or five goals. The fucking Seattle Kraken, which is like one of the newer teams that came out, of talking like, I, and the jersey looks dope as fuck, and the fucking goalie helmet looks dope as fuck. They've had blowout games where they've won like seven to two. Oh, it's just been crazy. It's been crazy cool. So for all my betters out there, listen to what Sal's saying. Right, we're betting the over on all NHL Everything. games right now. Overs, over. overs all day, no break. The over, 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 over on the NHL games. And I'm no whiz. But like, you vote for jerseys, bro, and they win. That's just how. That's just what happens. You vote for jerseys in NBA. Fan. I'm gonna get you a shirt that just says "Casual Fan." Yeah, I love your jersey. Yeah, I love your jersey. There's no way you can lose. Period. Absolutely. I'd love to get like. I, my big thing is like, if I can clean up my quote office area end quote, I'd love to put like NHL goalie helmets up. Because oh, the art that's yeah. on those goalie helmets are just fucking insane. And, yeah, like, yeah. that's that's really, like, as we wind down on this, that's really my thing. Like, Enrique is a big sports guy who keeps up with the players and management and stuff like that. And I'm a big, like, hobby dude. So I'm all about tabletop gaming. I'm all about board games, video games, like, painting miniatures and yeah. all that stuff. So, like, I see that art and I'm just like, that's like spray paint art to me. I love that shit. Like that stuff is so cool. And I try to bring that into what I do for like tabletop gaming and stuff. So that's yeah, my is, that's my world that I jump into all the time. And which we're going to have segments about that stuff too. So I mean, we're going to talk about everything, right? And as we start growing our audience and they start leaving comments and suggestions of what they want us to talk about, we'll get that in. At some point, we'll be live with these things and get some interaction with some yeah. of our, our fans when we get big enough. So this is the first step. I think it's off to a great start. I think we're going to we're gonna kill it. Um, and I'm just happy and excited to finally get this going. I've been trying to do a podcast for a while. Once I met Sal and Cecilio, I knew I had some characters there. I think it's going to be nice. I'm so, here for you, bro. Um, hey, man, I'm here for here you, for too. you, big stretch. Speaking of killing it, I'm pretty sure fucking Cecilio's engine is absolutely killed. That, or he's on the south side of Chicago. He actually could be killed right now. No, I ain't like, joking about that. I'm just telling you, it's the south side, right? Yeah, Cecilio's got like place. Wolverine claws and like fucking like shotguns mounted on his shoulder. It ain't no one going to take him out. That's true, too. He's, he's packy. He's for sure packy. He's a concealed That dude's packy. straight up Arnold in Commando. Like, ain't no one going to touch that guy. So, that, that's another point, right? I mean, we're going to probably be talking about guns and, like, you know, what, what we carry, what we, you know, what we have, stuff like that. Is Cecilio's going to be able to contribute on that. So, we're yeah. going to talk about a lot of different things. I just got to watch John Wick, like, a couple more times, and I can I could probably talk about it. Too. I haven't even seen one of them, so we can watch them together. Bro, yeah, that's okay. That's something we got. That's going to be, like, a live cast day. And yeah, Re- sure. Enrique's reaction to John Wick. Yeah, and yeah, if you if you just if you just fucking shrug after the first movie, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Cecilio, gonna we're gonna purpose. we're gonna put you the 3D through a table, bro, in your basement. And I know yes. all you got is glass tables down there. Yes, yes, <laughs> nice. About to get that May Young power bomb through your fucking cabinets. <laughs> the sexual chocolate May Young power bomb. <laughs> and she says she felt amazing after it. Like, yeah, she, she loved it, bro. It. Yes, she loved it. Yes. How, yes, that's good. That's, good that, that's what we need. We need. I need yeah. to. I need to have let 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 me power by my boss, and that's how that's how we move into the next level. So he can yes. retire, and I take a spot because he's quote injured, right? He's gonna be <laughs> out for six to eight months, and then he'll come back and be like, "I got new clients and a whole okay. new team." 
<laughs> You'll kill your boss, bro. Like that. He can't survive. That. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a cell match. I'll, I'll destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just going to keep showing replays of him falling off the top? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to be tossing him right through that fucking, right through that fucking foldable table with Vince McMahon doing commentary Absolutely. in front of him. Absolutely. Oh, my God. How great. Hey, hold on. So, still, are you okay? Let's do a wellness check on him. Yeah. Shit, no, he's done. <laughs> oh no, he. We got a text. We got a text. What's the text say? He's bro. It was a pick text. He's underneath the fucking car. <laughs> he's underneath the car trying to fix hey, that it. That was the proof we were looking for. We can't write him up now. I, but no, I'm I guess underneath the fucking car. Look, he un- <laughs> and I'm not skinny, and I don't have a jack. <laughs> and also, the truck is now stuck in reverse in my garage. <laughs> we'll just put the. So, at any moment, <laughs> but you got it in the garage, back, though, right? You got it in the uh, garage, though. Yeah, but it's not in parts. Step one. So if I wake up tomorrow morning, my truck's in the backyard. <laughs> just hey, put the hey, fucking turn, parking turn brake sideways, on. Though. Turn sideways, so you're not under the <laughs> Yeah, turn, turn the fucking <laughs> steering wheel and put the parking brake on. <laughs> There's uh, no way that could yeah, go wrong. Right. What are you doing? It's all right. Hey, he's just gonna put. Like, he's, just, see right now. he's just gonna put bricks in front of the tires and pray to Jesus <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> oh, it's stuck in reverse. Only, bro. only God oh, can save God. me now. <laughs> I guess we won't be seeing you tomorrow. Uh, I'm burning my hands with this catalytic converter. I wish somebody would have stole it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, please. You ain't oh, got gloves either? What fucking car oh, guy are you, bro? Oh, bro, I'm in a fucking... I don't want to use that term, but... <laughs> Enrique knows what I'm wearing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just get the got, fuck he's got, his A shirt. he's got his A shirt on. The A shirt. Yeah, that's right. A-shirt. That's that Walmart tone. <laughs> that Walmart lingo. Give me that, give me that long A shirt. Give me that it's long George A shirt. Graham from Walmart. FYI. <laughs> it's George. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, go back on mute, man. I don't want to distract you. <laughs> if that oh, if, if that car falls on you, though, just text us. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, you'll get here within the hour, right? Well, I, yeah, probably like two to be honest. Someone. Yeah, we I could send we could send patrol. <laughs> the garage is locked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Patrol's grounded. Yeah, we cannot send patrol. You got to figure out a way to get to a certain site so I can I can actually prioritize patrol to come to you. Nice. There you go. There you go. There you go. Well, Sal, I think I think we can end this here. Let uh, Cecilio finish uh, working on his car. So, uh, unless you had something else you wanted to talk about, I'm good, bro. I'm ready to call it quits for this night. This was great. I'm real happy about it. We got good yeah, mojo, sure. good vibes, a lot of good stuff to talk about, a lot of crazy shit to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna be hearing crazy stories. You're gonna be hearing a lot of passionate sports enthusiasts. You're gonna be hearing a lot of shenanigans, and we're just here to kind of vent out our frustration in the funniest way possible to bring as much entertainment to your to your ears, to your homes, to your offices, to your cars, wherever you can hear it out. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, NBLT stands for nobody on time, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna make sure that we keep you entertained for as long as you're here. So uh, we're signing off. Everyone have a good night, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you.